Kia ora, Miss Lindsay here, and um, welcome to your video on projectile motion. This is for Year 10 PE. Right, today we will be learning about projectiles, trajectories, the forces that add on, act on projectiles, the three main principles involved in projectile motion, and how we apply those different principles to different skills. The first one here we've got is um, a projectile, is any object or body that is in flight. Okay, so we can see the balls here, they are in flight, therefore they are projectiles. And we have the angry birds and they're also in flight, so they are projectiles. The trajectory is the path that the projectile flows, uh, flies. Sorry. So it's shown here by these blue dotted lines. So that is the path that that ball has flew, flew through the air. <laughs> um, this shape here is parabolic, which basically just means it's a nice arc here, the shape. Um, different forces that act upon your projectile are gravity, which brings the projectile down to earth, um, air resistance, which makes it difficult for the uh, projectile to uh, follow its normal path, bringing it down to earth quicker, and spin on the ball, creating a Magnus effect, um, changing the path of the ball in the air so it can bend the uh, movement of the, of the projectile. So the three main principles that act upon a projectile, um, basically we, without thinking about it, or sometimes with thinking about it, utilise these three different um, principles to uh, change how we, how a ball or a projectile either flies through the air, um, or you know whether we're aiming for distance, speed, how we utilise and we um, manipulate those three, these three factors. The angle of release, um, if we were aiming for optimal angle and there were no external forces, 45 degrees would be the optimal angle that we would try to aim for. Um, usually in sporting situations though, we aim for 35 to 45 um, degrees because the air resistance and spin can act upon that ball longer if they are in flight for longer. So the height of release. Um, height, height of release is the, ball, the, um, the height from the ground that the projectile is released from. So the last point of contact. So here, this um, man here, I think he's throwing a shot put. The height of release is the point that is released from his hand, Okay, that distance away from the ground. That is your height of release. So if he was to release this ball from, say, a metre higher, and it followed the same trajectory because he used the same force and the same angle of re release, it is going to stay in air for longer and it is going to come down and have traveled further. Okay, so it follows that same trajectory. So basically the longer it's in the air, because it started from a higher height, the longer it takes for gravity to pull the projectile down. Now the speed of release, this just um, relates to the amount of force that is put into the um, action. So greater force equals greater distance. Okay, so this is um, influenced obviously by summation of forces, which we've already learnt. Um, and it's just saying that the more force that is put into each um, action, the longer it will stay in the air, the further it will be able to travel. Now, do we always want to use the optimal angle in our sporting situations? So what type of sports and skills would use this? Um, if you're trying to think of for distance, the like a couple of the ones that I've chosen here are throwing a javelin and hitting a softball. So yes, optimally, if we were aiming for the optimal um, optimal angle of 45 degrees and there were no external forces, then those two um, would be two skills that would use that. However, due to the external forces of um, air resistance and um, and spin, both of those you would aim for. A, probably 35 degrees. What sports and, sk and skills would not need to use this? I've got a volleyball spike and basketball layup. So volleyball spike, obviously, your um, angle is aiming down. Basketball layup, your angle would be closer to 80 degrees. All right, so what do, how do we see this within a single sport? 
So in volleyball, um, the the four main skills you've got spike, serve, dig, and set. Each one of them has got a different um, angle of release, a different height of release, and a different speed of release. So obviously a spike is fast, or the fastest speed of release most probably. A dig would therefore be the slowest because it slows the ball down. Um, a serve is going to be aiming slightly up, maybe like 35 to 40 degrees, um, whereas a set would be aiming at around 90, 80, 80 degrees, depending on where you receive it. Right, height, obviously dig, demonstrated by this picture here, is quite low, whereas this picture here, this person is going to serve or spike, and they are at a uh, very high height of release above the ground, and she's jumping. So to summarise, um, a projectile is any object or body in motion. A trajectory is the path that the object follows while in flight. There are three main principles involved in the motion of a projectile. That angle, speed and height of release. There are other forces that act on those while they're in the air. That's gravity, air resistance and spin. Different skills within our different sports that we use and play require different application of the three main principles. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.